So, this, this is West Ham United. At this football club, we don't really sign strikers, and, when we do, they don't tend to be very good. Who's that too? There's no one fucking standing there! We also love converting players into random positions, for absolutely no apparent reason. So, I had the absolutely genius idea, of loading up Football Manager, and converting Craig Dawson, arguably one of the greatest defenders of all time, into one of the greatest forwards of all time. I've offered him a brand new 5 year contract, that expires in 2026, with an option of another 3 years. The goal of this series, is to win the Premier League, and also the Champions League, before his contract expires. The only catch is, Craig Dawson must be playing at striker at all times. So, can we do it? So, the very first thing we had to do, was make our manager. Now, since we're about to take over a club, who've just had their most successful season in recent history, I really need to win the fans over. Especially as I'm about to take a no-nonsense center half, and slap him up front. I had to make myself look charismatic, charming, and, like a proper leader of men, so I could really tame the beast, that is Craig Dawson. And, after countless hours of intense work, and really making sure I was refining every fine detail of my manager, it was done. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet the new manager of West Ham United Football Club. Born on the 1st of April 2001, coming in at 7 foot 3, a lifelong West Ham United supporter from Glasgow. Please welcome, Mavid Doys. Just look at this absolute specimen. This appearance single-handedly, has just guaranteed us to never be losing at half time. Could you imagine dropping a stinker in the first half, and walking in the dressing room, to be greeted with this? You've gotta fucking die to get three points! So, there we are. Mavid Doys, replaces David Moyes, as the new West Ham United manager. Now, after Karen Brady welcomed me to the club, and showed me to my office, the very first thing I did, was call Craig Dawson in, and gave him a blank check, so he could sign a new five-year deal. And the rest, is going to be history. So, once the players welcomed me with open arms, Craig started training as a center forward, as well as learning to attempt overhead kicks, thanks to Kevin Nolan. I also had to make sure that Craig Dawson, and Craig Dawson only, would take each and every one of our penalties. Also, 10 penalties? Did football manager not see Craig's penalty against Man City last year? Have it. Anyways, once that was done, I had to address the backroom staff. The first position I wanted to address was my assistant manager. Now, Mark Noble retires at the end of the season, so I want to eventually bring him in. But for this season, I needed someone, who, everybody will be pleased to work with, someone who's easygoing, someone who won't be too harsh on the lads, when a minor inconvenience occurs. So welcome to West Ham United. Roy Keane. Really? <laughs> the only first team staff members that actually kept their jobs, were Alan Irvine and Stuart Pearce. I also kept hold of Kevin Nolan, purely so we can do those chip free kicks that we used to do under Sam Allardyce. Carlton Cole was promoted to a first team coach. The Ginger Pele, and UC Yaskalainen, also came in, as did Ali McCoist, as he decided he couldn't stomach another minute, of working with Simon Jordan at TalkSport. He's a water missy. Alan Devonshire, also came in as a director of football. Mario Husillas was also available, and I personally, could not think of anyone better to pick up as a scout. I also filled the under 23s and 18s, with as many ex-players as possible. And there we go, our backroom staff was completed, at least for now anyway. I give to you, Backstreet Boys. Also, I can't be the only one, that thinks ranking this as one of the worst sets of coaching staffs in the Premier League, is a bit harsh? I mean, you really wouldn't want to mess with any of these, would you? So, before we get into the transfers, I had to introduce myself to the media, and I'm sure they were delighted to see me. Oh, yeah, Sam. After that, we need to get the whiteboard out, and set our transfer policy. The first, and most important thing we are looking for in our transfers, is a big bastard. Unless they are very special, then I'm expecting an absolute minimum, of 6 foot 1, but we're aiming for bigger. The second thing we are looking for, is players who can cross the ball. We want a team of giants, but that's no use, if we don't have anyone sticking it in the air. The third thing we're looking for, is character. What do they do off the pitch? What will they add to the dressing room? And last, but certainly not least, we are looking for work rate, determination, and aggression, so we can complement Craig Dawson's work rate, determination, and aggression. Now, after carefully assessing our squad, position by position, and sticking to our transfer policy, we made quite a few changes. I decided, with him only having a year left on his contract, and being 36 years of age, that selling Lucas Fabianski, would be a good decision. So, he went and signed for a club in Qatar, for around 1 million great British pounds. Now, who did I replace him with, I hear you ask? Well, after deciding that 36 years of age, was too old for my second choice keeper, I decided, to approach 38 year old, Ben Foster. What a friggin legend. He eventually signed, but negotiations were really, really tough. Ben? So, hey there, Ben. Fancy coming to West Ham United, as a normal, second choice goalkeeper? No. Ben? Alright, fine. 
You can bring your GoPro and film a crossbar challenge with Great Dawson. You absolute friggin' legend. Yes. David Gold especially was absolutely delighted to see his favorite goalkeeper signed for the Hammers. Ryan Fredericks went the other way for 3 million. Is a Diop signed for Shakhtar for 11 million pounds. I didn't particularly want to sell Lanzini, but 13 million was too good to turn down for someone who doesn't really fit what we're trying to do. And lastly, Andrei Yomelenko went to Italy as he signed for Genoa. Now, the first position I went out to look for was another striker. And yes, I know what you're thinking. But, 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 isn't the whole point of the series to play Craig Dawson up front? And, yes, it certainly is. But, even though Craig is an absolute physical specimen, he will need a rest every now and then, even if it's just coming off the bench for the last 20 minutes, after he's just annihilated his opposition. So, we searched all across the world for someone who could even come close to Craig's ability, but it proved incredibly difficult. I tried approaching Andy Carroll, but he just signed for West Brom. I tried to bring back Big Jordan Hugel, but unfortunately, he just signed for Cardiff on loan. Come on, you I in hell. I was even willing to give Simone Zaza a second shot at West Ham, but he failed his medical. Even Freddy Sears didn't fancy coming back either. So, I had to think outside the box, and, when I say outside the box, I mean that quite literally, as I didn't sign a striker, to be our second choice striker, because who, in their right mind, would even contemplate doing that? So, please welcome to West Ham United, our new backup striker, James Tompkins. Yes, he's home, he's back where he belongs. Look at us, huh? Who would've thought? Not me. And doesn't he just look like the perfect, second choice striker? Although, when in contract negotiations, he was severely mistaken, when he thought he'd be playing as a center half. So now that the backup striker was out of the way, my absolute number one target was James Ward Prowse. Now, I know he's not particularly tall, but if we signed him, we would literally score every single set piece. Unfortunately he's just signed a new deal, so we'll try again in January. But for this transfer window, I tried to bring Fellaini in as cover for Thomas Socek, but he wasn't interested. And, after seeing who else was available in midfield, I just simply couldn't see anyone better than Alex Kral. So, I didn't sign any midfielders. Well, I signed this Tunisian bloke, but I'm intending to play him as a center back this season, because that's what we do here at West Ham. Now, elsewhere, we signed, Cristiano. No, not that one, the better one. Just have a look at him, he's tall, and, he can cross a ball, he is literally, perfect. Someone else who is tall, and can cross a ball, is Alexander Kolarov. Now, I know he's 35, but just look at him, and try and tell me he's not absolutely perfect, you just simply cannot. Nawel Molina also came in as a wingback, to push Mikhail Antonio and Vladimir so foul. And yes, Mikhail Antonio is going to be used as a right wingback, so what? Now, now that the transfers were sorted, I set up our training schedule, and, we would get pre-season underway. We fared quite well, especially as we had to travel to Stoke, and believe me, nobody wants to travel to f***ing Stoke. We even scored from a Rory de Lapp special. You just couldn't write it. We went unbeaten in pre-season, as Craig Dawson was starting to adjust to his new role. And, not just that, he was absolutely flourishing. Not only could he not stop scoring, but he was taking the absolute piss. And, just a week before the season kicked off, we had to play in the most prestigious trophy in football history. The Betway Cup. So, for anyone who's unaware, the Betway Cup has been a pre-season tradition for West Ham, since 2015. It is literally, a one-match trophy, and, despite us literally inventing it, we are historically terrible in this competition. We've only won it twice, in seven attempts. We've not even won it the record amount of times. Werder Bremen also won it twice, and they've only been in it. Twice. So, on Football Manager, you can't actually make a one-match pre-season trophy, it's almost as if it's a bit of a weird idea. Instead, you have to have four teams, and you play a semi-final, then a final, to decide who takes the trophy. There's also a third-place playoff, if you lose the semi-final. So, in this year's Betway Cup, we will welcome, Red Star Belgrade. Well, what I thought was Red Star Belgrade anyway, it turns out it's actually just some French team, called Red Star. The other two teams, are Porto, and Lazio. Porto will be our opponents in the semi-final. And, should we make it to the final, we will play either Lazio, or Red Star. So, let's do this. Hello, and welcome back to Stratford. Today, we have the Betway Cup semi-final, between West Ham United, and FC Porto. As you can see, West Ham United have taken their preparations for the match, very seriously. By all means enjoy it, but enjoy it by being fucking disciplined here. Right then, the teams are out, and ready to go. A huge match in the history of both of these football clubs. Come on you fucking irons. The Slavic Stuart Pierce floats one in. Oh fucking hell Craig, you absolute fucking idiot. You have to be scoring those, fuck's sake. 
FC Porto hilariously come forward, as if they're going to even come close to troubling our goal. Ah, shit. Shit, 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 yes. <laughs> pathetic. Absolutely fucking pathetic. What a save from the croissant Cassias. Absolutely incredible. The Arancini Alaba throws it into the box. No great has done absolutely wonderfully there. And Arjen Bowen gives West Ham United the lead in the Bedway Cup semi final. Arjen Bowen? That is incredible. Yes, okay, Jesus. Thank you for that. No, 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 don't you fucking dare. <laughs> pathetic. Absolutely fucking pathetic. What sort of an effort was that? What an absolute disgrace to the Betway Cup. Oh my god, we're just taking the absolute piss here. Ole. 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 Oh you absolute fucking idiot. How has the Paella pennant managed to put that wide? Unfucking believable. Right. Come on. Enough of this tippy tappy nonsense now. Let's just keep it simple and see out the game in these last few minutes. Brilliant. Absolutely fucking brilliant. You just knew that was going to fucking happen, didn't you? We're just cursed. Absolutely fucking cursed. We just simply cannot win the bet wake up. We are incapable. Why? Why must we suffer? Every fucking year it's the same shit with this stupid competition. If we can't even win a trophy that we literally invented ourselves, then how are we supposed to achieve anything as a club? Fuck's sake. Oh my god, no way, please. Oh you absolute fucking hero. I don't believe it. I don't fucking believe it. That big bastard has only gone and fucking done it, hasn't he? The blue passport Batistuta has only gone and sent West Ham United into the Betway Cup final in the dying last few seconds. Big players, step up in the big moments. And that big bastard is certainly a big player in every sense of the word. Right, come on. This doesn't slip now. This does not fucking slip now. Referee, where's your whistle? Where's your fucking whistle? And there we have it. West Ham United are officially in the Betway Cup final. Stratford absolutely fucking erupts. Unfortunately the Portuguese Paul Lambert is simply no match for Mavid Doys' massive bastards. We are fucking massive. Come on you irons. Good lord. Craig is absolutely fucking inevitable, isn't he? He deliberately toyed with FC Porto for 89 minutes, before pouncing in the 90th minute, to collect his Man of the Match award, and break Portuguese hearts. Right, to the surprise of absolutely nobody, Lazio managed to get past Red Star, and they will make the trip to Stratford, for the Betway Cup Final. Hello, and welcome, to the bastard Betway Cup Final. We're back in Stratford, for the second time in two days, where West Ham United, will take on Italian outfit, Lazio. The teams are out and ready here, come on you fucking irons. Lazio have been on the back foot in these opening few minutes, they just simply, cannot get the ball off of West Ham United. The Cockney Cazola hits it, and scores an absolute thunder bastard, to put West Ham United 1-0 up. The Cockney Cazola! Thank you for that Jesus. Stratford absolutely fucking erupts. Oh that is absolutely fantastic work from Craig yet again. And the Algerian Alessandro Del Piero doubles the lead, just 19 minutes into the game. The Algerian Del Piero! Fucking get in there Jesus you absolute beauty. Oh my god, oh my fucking god, it's coming home. That bastard bet wake up is finally coming home. <laughs> really, again. Ole. 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 Oh my fucking god, <laughs> we are the best footballing team on the fucking planet. We are making an absolute mockery out of Lazio. We are making an absolute mockery out of the Betway Cup. Hell, we are making an absolute mockery out of football, as a competitive sport. We have just simply, hit peak footballing levels. Oh you have got to be taking the absolute fucking piss. Why? Why are West Ham United incapable of holding onto a 3-0 lead? Unfucking believable. No, no 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 no. Please, this can't happen. This can't fucking happen. <laughs> get in. Fucking get in, it's offside. I love the AR. Don't we all, Jesus? And there we have it. I can barely hold back the tears. West Ham United are finally Betway Cup champions. All we had to do was slap a no-nonsense centre-half from Rochdale up front. Who would have thought? What a way to kickstart the season. 
Now, bring on the fucking Barclays. We are fucking massive. Come on you irons. After the incredible highs of winning the Betway Cup, Manchester City made the trip to Stratford for the first game of the Premier League season. So, this is how we will line up in our opening game. Craig Dawson obviously leads the line, and, thanks to Pablo Fornals and Saeed Bin Rama's Betway Cup performances, Jared Bowen will have to sit on the bench for this one. It's also a return to English football, for Alexander Kolarov, who faces his former club. Hello, and welcome to the Bastard Barclays, where today, Betway Cup champions, West Ham United, take on Manchester City. A huge game of football here in Stratford. At the end of the season, we could potentially look back on this game, as the match that decided the Premier League title. Right, fucking come on West Ham. The Slavic Stuart Pierce whips it in. And that big bastard blue passport Batistuta has only gone and put West Ham United 1-0 up against the Premier League champions. I rent, I rent, I rent. Yes, okay, Jesus. Thank you for that. Fucking hell. We're doing a title charge, aren't we? We're doing a fucking title charge. Oh my god, we're in a game here. Oh, you absolute fucking idiot, Craig. As a centre forward, you just simply have to be scoring that, for fuck's sake. The Slavic Stuart Pierce whips in yet another beauty. Yes, no yes no 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 oh my fucking god you have to be taking the absolute fucking piss. How the actual fuck have we not doubled our league? It's not over the line! It's not totally over the line! I'll tell you what though, Manchester City simply cannot handle the sheer physicality of Mavid Boys' massive bastards. Ah oh, shit, no 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 yes ha 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 Ah, shit. Unbelievable, unfucking believable. We should, at the very least, be 6-0 up at this point, and yet we're drawing one all. I just can't fucking believe what I'm witnessing. This has to go down as one of the biggest injustices in footballing history. Oh I'll tell you what this is absolutely fucking lovely. Come on, please. Oh for fuck's sake, how has the Algerian Alex Iwobi managed to miss from there? Why can we not just fucking finish our chances? The Slavic Stuart Pierce yet again whips it in. Oh this has to be some sort of sick fucking joke. How? How? Fucking how? Oh, great. Let me guess, they're now gonna go up the other end and score, aren't they? Yes great defending, right. Come on. Please, let's just take advantage of this momentum. They're just absolutely shook. They are so far on the back foot, that even Pep is somehow losing hair on the touchline. No way. Absolutely no fucking way. <laughs> what the actual fuck am I witnessing? What an absolute thunder bastard from the Czech Patrick Vieira. We're 35 minutes into the season, and we've already won the fucking Puskas award. We are absolutely fucking massive. Oh my fucking god he's beaten the offside trap here. Please. And the Algerian Alessandro Del Piero makes it 3-1. What the fuck is going on here in Stratford? The Algerian Del Piero. Fucking get in there Jesus. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. We're just taking the absolute piss out of this pathetic excuse of a Premier League team. We're in a game here. Oh my god. <laughs> We've almost made it 4. We are witnessing a true Mavid Boys masterclass here in Stratford. Not only are we witnessing some fine, sizzling, attacking football, but also a resolute, determined, and rock-solid defensive display. What in the actual flying fuck are you doing? Ah oh, shit. No. No 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 no. Please. Please don't do this to me West Ham. Not like this. Please. Yes great fucking header. Referee. Where's that bastard whistle? And there we have it. West Ham United kick off their Premier League campaign, with a 3-2 win against Manchester City. Unfortunately the Catalonian Chris Hutton is just simply no match for Mavid Boys' massive bastards. I'll tell you what, we're winning this bastard league. Hell, we're going invincible. Who is actually going to stop us? 37 points to go. We are fucking massive. Come on you irons. What a way to kickstart our Premier League campaign, defeating the Premier League champions. Next up, we made the trip to Kero Road, where we would not make any changes to the starting 11. The only change was, that David Martin replaced Ben Foster on the bench, as he injured himself filming a crossbar challenge with Jeremy Lynch. Use your swaz techers. And, we would yet again come away with the three points, thanks to a goal from Saeed Bin Rama, and a brace from the main man himself, Craig Dawson. He's genuinely, the form player of the entire Premier League at the moment. But, it's not just the goals Craig is scoring, it's his all-round centre-forward play. I mean, just look at that for a goal, he starts it all off, and finishes it himself. He's even adding flair to his game, this man actually has zero weakness. Kurt Zuma also malfunctioned, as he decided to gift Adam Ida a goal, for absolutely no apparent reason. However it couldn't matter any less, because we came away from Kero Road with the three points, and, it was certainly a sunny day in Norwich, as we would go top of the Premier League. The scenes, the absolute scenes. The morale around the club was at an all-time high, everybody was absolutely buzzing. 
Well, that was until Ben Foster was ruled out for two to three months after injuring himself on a sidemen penalty shootout. That's a bruisey bruise, isn't it? <laughs> we then made the trip to Brentford, where, after an absolutely abysmal match, Ivan Tony would score an absolute screamer. But, thanks to some absolutely genius tactical tweaks from Mavid Doys, Jared Bowen would score a late equalizer, which sent us into third place in the Barclays. So, I think that'll do for episode 1. Join us in the next episode where we will get our League Cup campaign underway, and also our Europa League campaign underway, where we've been drawn against. Lazio. Legia. Arsenal. Omonia. Let me know in the comments, how many goals will Craig score in all competitions this season? Also let me know what signings you'd want to see in the January transfer window. Before I go, I'll leave you with a message from Jesus, and I would strongly advise you do exactly as he says. We are fucking massive. Come on you irons. Subscribe to the West Ham Clips YouTube channel. This can now be placed in your bag. 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 Unexpected item in bagging area. Remove this item before continuing. continuing. Bag.